4. Comparison tests. In video 3, we looked at the limit comparison test. Here in video 4, we'll do examples applying LCT. Here are the four problems we'll consider. You can pause the video and work these on your own and come back. A general strategy is to look at the associated sequence and try and match it to a known series to compare with, and then make a guess as to whether it's going to converge or diverge. That's a good starting point. So on the first one, noticing that 7 to the n is much larger than 2 to the n, and throwing away 2 to the n, if the series is defined by this sequence, it would converge as a geometric series with r equaling 1 over 7. So for the first guy, let's make the assumption, let's make the guess that it's going to converge. So take the associated sequence, name it a sub n, see that it's similar to a b sub n, 1 over 7 to the n, and that the b sub n's define a convergent series. To do the limit comparison test, we need to obtain rho. Rho is the limit of the quotient an over bn. Looking at an, dividing by bn, is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal of bn. A quick way to clean this up is to divide every term in the top and every term in the bottom by 7 to the n. So 7 to the n goes to 1, 7 to the n goes to 1, 2 to the n goes to 2 over 7 raised to the n, 2 over 7 raised to larger and larger integer quantity will tend to 0. Therefore, the limit of an over bn is rho equal 1. Rho equaling 1 is a positive finite quantity where the sum of the bn's converges. Therefore, some of the an's will also converge thanks to LCT. Remember that CT was quite finicky. It had to have an inequality pointing in a certain direction. LCT, you don't need that. Good. The next example is nearly identical to the previous in the sense we're again going to get convergence. We again ignore lower valued terms, concentrate on the higher value term in the bottom, then see that it's a good idea to compare with a p series with p equaling 2, telling us that the series defined by the bn's will converge. To apply LCT means coming up with a row. Consider the an over bn. When we're dealing with rational expressions, it's convenient to multiply by the reciprocal instead of dividing. And like before, we can easily clean this up by dividing all terms in top and bottom by n squared. So that n over cosine, excuse me, n over n times cosine of n, all divided by n squared, will give us cosine of n over n. Since cosine of n fluctuates between negative 1 and positive 1, and n gets arbitrarily large, that term goes to 0 as the index n gets big. Thus, rho 
is equal to 1, rho being positive and finite, with the series defined by the bn's converging, tells us that the series defined by the an's, in other words, the given, also converges as we guessed. Nice. For the next one, we're again guessing converge to see why we might guess converge. Take that power 2, apply it to ln. You have to remember that ln grows extremely slowly. Compare the growth of ln with the growth of n. The growth of n is super strong in comparison with ln. So even though we're squaring ln in the numerator, it essentially is behaving like a constant. Then in the bottom, 0.6 plus 0.6 gives you 1.2. So looking at this, we might think of a p-series with p equaling 1.2, 1.2 strictly bigger than 1, i.e. guess that it will converge. Now notice, the past two examples, we came up with a finite rho, which was positive. Here we're going to get rho equaling 0. OK. Let's see why that's the case. If we compared with one, p equaling 1.2, when we form up this quotient, n to the 1.2 over n to the 1.2 would cancel away. Then this quotient would tend towards infinity as ln tends towards infinity. Checking our LCT, getting rho equaling infinity, we would therefore have to conclude diverge. But we wanted to conclude converge. And p of 1.2 doesn't define a divergent p-series. So we have to be a little bit careful here, a little bit clever, a little bit wily. And instead of going for the whole 1.2, we're going to back off a tiny bit. Any amount to back off is by is fine. I'm going to choose 1.1. You need to still have a p, which is strictly bigger than 1, but not exceeding the exponent in the an. OK, let's form this up. an over bn. So n to the 1.1 placed over n to the 1.2 will leave us with n to the 0 0.1 in the bottom. This ln will blow up. n will blow up. That's an indeterminate form. We can therefore apply L'Hopital's, do a chain rule computation in the top, and a straight derivative in the bottom. Clean this up with 1 over n over 1 over n to the 0 0.9. We'll be left with n to the 0 0.1 in the bottom, plus some constant multiplying. Ln is still blowing up, n is still blowing up. Second application of L'Hopital's. Ln goes to 1 over n, n to the 0 0.1, produces another 0 0.1 times 1 over n to the 0 0.9. Cleaning up the n's, since we have a full n up against n to the 0 0.9, we'll be left with n to the 0 0.1 in the bottom. As n blows up, this denominator gets large. 1 over large goes to 0 as n goes to infinity. Let's come back and look at LCT. So we're not getting a positive finite value. We're getting 0. And the bn that we used was a p-series with p equaling 1.1, in other words, a convergent p-series. Hence, 
we can conclude that our given series will converge thanks to LCT. We found row equaling zero. Nice. One last one will be a similar type of exercise. Here's the fourth guy. And this one's going to converge. So you can graph out 1 over n and sine of 1 over n. 1 over n goes to 0 as n gets big. If you graph sine, look at the tangent. Those guys get very, very close to each other. So that this difference, I guess I should say that if you look at the harmonic, the harmonic diverges. This guy is behaving just like 1 over n. So this quantity goes to 0 fast enough to ensure that the sum converges. OK. Well, it's like the previous, a good choice of p to make this work. So you can try it a number of ways and find that the choice of p matters greatly. Let's try p equal 3 over 2. 3 over 2 is strictly bigger than 1. Therefore, this bn determines a convergent p series. Form up the ratio. An's on top, bn's on bottom. We're going to take n to the 3 halves and multiply it by each term in the top. n to the 3 halves over n. n to the 3 halves is the same thing as n to the 1 times n to the 1 half. I'm noticing that n to the 1 half is going to remain when I simplify the first term. And then since sine of a quantity over that quantity limits to 1 if that quantity goes to 0. I'm going to form that up with this n here. Multiplying by n is the same thing as dividing by its reciprocal. Good. Now, since I know that the limit of this term as n goes to infinity will be 1, and 1 minus 1 is 0, whereas this n to the 1 half will tend to infinity. We have an indeterminate form of infinity times 0. We can easily move this term going to infinity down into the bottom and get an indeterminate form of 0 over 0. To help with the notation, let's define this quotient as f of 1 over n. And then 1 over n, let's set that equal to theta. Then note that if n is going out to infinity, n is positive, therefore theta is always going to be positive, that that's the same as theta going to 0 from above. So taking the limit of the an over bn as n goes to infinity is the same thing as taking the limit of f as theta goes to 0 from above. Good. So f of theta, here's the definition of f. Wherever we see 1 over n, swap it out with a theta. Sine of 1 over n is sine of theta. 1 over n is theta. And 1 over rad n is radical theta. OK, good. Same notion, this denominator is going to go to 0. The numerator is also going to 0, 1 minus 1. Thus, an indeterminate form of 0 over 0. Apply L'Hopital's. 1 differentiates to 0. The minus, bring it down. Do the quotient rule on sine of theta over theta. And differentiate the radical. 
Good. Bring the two all the way to the front and bring the rad theta up to the numerator so that theta squared becomes theta to the three halves. Again, we're doing theta going to zero. Sine of zero is zero and zero times one is zero. So the numerator is zero and clearly the, the denominator is zero. Thus, L'Hopital's once more. Do the easy one. Derivative of theta to the three halves, three halves times theta to the one half. When, we t when the derivative hits the theta, we'll be left with a negative cosine. And when the derivative hits the sine, we'll be left with a positive cosine. Those guys will cancel out. And then we'll be left with the derivative acting on cosine. There's a minus present already, so that'll go to positive sine. And the theta in front carries down. Thus, theta over theta to the one half is going to leave us with a theta to the one half in the numerator. We're now ready to take the limit. Theta to the one half times sine of theta is zero. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. So, what did we finally come up with? We finally got our limit rho equaling zero. Going back, what did we use for our bn? A p series with p greater than one. Therefore, the bn's define a series which converges. And by LCT, having achieved rho equals zero, the ANs also de define a convergent series. Excellent.